Welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because that's what I do here. <laughs> it's D&D. How to D&D. Dungeon Master Preparation. This is where we actually do some work. This is Lesson 4, Creating Locations. What does that mean? What does it look like? What are we covering today? Well, as it happens, my overview for today is the following. Um, inspiration for Creating Locations. I'm going to talk about that how to create locations, the location details and information, specific location layout, like, you know, what does that mean? Well, I always talk about a specific location. In the past, I've talked about other topics such as castles and tombs and so forth. And I also give you some miscellaneous recommendations because that's hopefully going to help you along. My objectives for today I'm going to explain everything, the process of building uh, an adventure location. I'm going to demonstrate the process as well. And I'm going to give you a chance to practice and, and help me do that. That's why you're here. Um, so uh, feel free, make sure you are available because uh, I'm going to ask you lots and lots of questions. Inspiration for creating locations. Where do you get your inspiration from? Well, I would suggest to you that real world uh, architecture and landmarks are a good start. I often use them myself. Find an image of a historic building and use that or the structure or area. Uh, books and movies offer many landscapes and places that are quite exotic that you can incorporate into your game. Video, video games have, uh, particularly the RPG play experience, they usually present very dynamic environments that you can explore, so you could use video games. Pictures, paintings, a landscape, artwork done in oil or acrylic or even watercolour could be something that you could use as a, a location for your adventure. Pre-made, role-play, published adventures. Like anything that has been pre-published as an adventure, they often have locations that you can reuse or maps that you can reuse as well. Uh, Google search, Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt all have images of locations these are good starting points when you're trying to get inspiration for your location when you're doing anything for your game. Um, how do you create a location? What does that look like? I'm going to suggest to you that uh, use real world architecture, like use uh, plans and layouts, uh, deck plans of real ships, uh, floor plans of real buildings and ruins, it's very useful, okay? The, you, you can make some modifications, of course, but that's a good starting point. I want you to check out Sly Flourish's fantastic locations. His pre preparation me method around this is really good. Um, you can make it old, and his concepts are pretty basic. Distilled down to is make it old, make it large, give it unique features, make it functional, and give it an interesting name, okay? That's very helpful. All that will help create a more fantastical location or something that's a bit more exotic. Focus on making the location reusable as a set piece. It's really helpful for the future in terms of your preparation because many locations tend to repeat, such as you, a village tend to be built the same way. So villages, towns, cities, castles aren't quite the same way, but there is some basic um, parameters and things that they generally have in terms of a castle depending on its size. A stronghold, tombs are usually built the same way, pyramids, uh, a maze, now obviously a maze will be different in almost every respect because every maze is different, uh, but the concept behind them is that there is an entry point and an exit point and that's it and so you can often reuse a lot of mazes from activity books uh, and incorporate them into your own, own game. Uh, a temple, usually constructed the same way, a shrine, a mine, um, caves can be pretty much anything. The cave locations can vary, but they, they the concept behind them is pretty much the same. And then your monster layers. A lot of the monsters have layers that have a, a particular layout and formation. Your death trap dungeon, your treasure vault will pretty much look the same, and your sailing ship ship with the deck plan and its um its hold is usually almost exactly the same. You'll find the Dungeon Master Guide has some useful information on page 292 to 295 if you're interested. That's for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Ensure the location is interactive for your characters because it's the tool, um, or one of the tools, 
that you're going to be utilizing as part of the three pillars. And remember, one of the three pillars is exploration. Your location needs to be something that needs to be explored. There needs to be things that are hidden that you need to find. Draw a picture with digital tools or a pencil and paper. Um, change what you need and, uh, you know, make it sure it's going to fit into your adventure or your campaign. Make sure to label the map with the locations. There are lots of digital tools out there that you can utilize. I'm going to say to you right now, it is not essential that you use a digital tool. Okay, it doesn't look, need to look professional. If it's for your own game table, it doesn't matter. If you're publishing, you won't be watching this. Um, in terms of pen and pencil though, like anybody can do that. Okay, you're, you're the only one that ever needs to see that, uh, that map. So it doesn't need to be um, a masterpiece in any way whatsoever. So don't worry about that sort of thing. Locations, details, and the information. Like, what are the things we need to pull out for this when we're doing our, um, our area? There are some questions you want to ask. Who created the location? And I would suggest look at the Dungeon Master Guide on page 100 for some ideas and um, or you could just create your own but there are some a list of ideas about who might have created the location the dungeon the location what is the purpose of the location so figure out what that is a mine is used for mining for ore um, a castle is used to defend a location you can see the Dungeon Master Guide for a few things that would sort of break down what the purpose of a location might be on page 101 of uh, for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. What is the history of the location? Uh, what is the why is the location actually important? Now these questions are partly answered in the Dungeon Master Guide on page 101 as well. What inhabits your location? The general population of the location. Is it full of orcs or goblins or zombies or skeletons or some other creature? And uh, I would say, I'm going to point you to the Dungeon, Ma Dungeon Master Guide on page 101 to 102. And it'll give you some ideas about how to do that as well. So figuring out the general population. That doesn't mean that every part of your um, area that you've created has just this particular monster type. That's not the case it's just what is the general dominant population in the area position some hazards or obstacles in your location such as traps and puzzles to slow them down natural hazards are very good uh, see the dungeon master guide on page 102 to 105 and page 296 to 298 that'll give you a whole bunch of different ideas it won't give you much in the way of puzzles because Wizards of the Coast doesn't seem to publish anything around that that's really any good um, it does have some trap stuff and some natural hazard stuff as well dressings objects furniture adding features to your location with aspects that can be interacted with or manipulated we want to do this okay so that the exploration um, f is actually going to be focused on. Like we want them to interact and find and discover stuff and learn more about where they are exploring and why they're going for this adventure in the first place. So I'm going to refer you to a really good section in the Dungeon Master Guide on page 298 to 301. It actually has a lot of tables and charts which you'll find really useful for filling out all of that sort of stuff I just talked about. Now whenever I do one of these uh, videos, I always give you miscellaneous recommendations. So I'm going to give you some miscellaneous recommendations, people. You don't have to be good at drawing a location map, because you're not selling it. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. You don't have to draw your map on gridded paper. That can be helpful, but you can draw, draw it on a blank piece of paper, that's fine. It's not necessary to use or learn map drawing software because there are in fact alternative methods okay there's a lot of software out there that does all the drawing for you does it randomly okay or you can draw your own or you can reuse somebody else's maps so many different maps have been made for fantasy locations you can steal or borrow existing maps to your heart's content it's really not going to be that difficult to do and so if, as soon as you feel like it's becoming too much and too difficult I want to remind you, you're not publishing. You don't have to put that much pressure on yourself. You will be all right. I'm hoping that this video was helpful to you and that you learned something from it and it was going to help guide you towards doing your own stuff. Um, please put your comments and your questions in the comments section. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.